In this video, we're going to show how a user can set up a floor pro model for a two-way slab. This could also pertain to one-way slabs or uh, slabs with beams. And we're going to talk about how to set this up for displaying and calculating crack widths and also cracked deflections in the program. And we're going to be um, demonstrating this on a two-way reinforced concrete model without any post-tensioning. Um, the same process can be used for a post-tension slab there with one minor difference that we'll show uh, in the video. So we'll go ahead now and get started. We'll go ahead and launch Builder. And in Builder, we're going to make some selections here for the programs to use. We're going to use Floor Pro. We don't need to have Edge. This is just for a single level slab. Um, here we'll select RC and then we're going to use the uh, metric system for our units today and we'll select OK. Now when we open the program in RC mode, the first thing to show here will be under criteria uh, design code. We can see that when ACI is selected, we'll be using ACI as the design code. The program includes options for crack width. We can report the crack width. And we can also limit crack width. If you want to limit to a specific value, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters, we can limit it to this crack width. And the program will add reinforcement per the European code provisions for crack control in this instance. Um, if we go to the help menu, that shows you the code reference for the European code. What we'll do now is I'm actually going to close the program and I'm going to reopen it um, with post-tensioning invoked. So we'll go ahead here and reopen here with um, the PT mode. And you'll notice back in criteria under design code, this option for reporting crack width is now empty. It's disabled. So as a user, if you want to calculate crack widths for a PT model, we can always uh, make a change in a file, the initialize file in Builder, we can go and go ahead and search that location. So we'll go to the program files x86 under the adapt folder. We'll go to adapt builder. And in this um, set of program files, we're going to search for initialize. And here we have initialize builder txt. And we'll just come down and there's a line here that says report crack width two way ACI in Canadian. So we're going to set that value to 1, and I'll just save that. And this would have to happen if you reinstall the program. The saving doesn't, or the file doesn't get saved. You have to reset this. But once we have done that, um, we'll go back now, reopen the program with PT mode. That's, again, set here. And now under the design code selection for ACI, um, we should have the ability, this is actually under allowable stresses, the ability to report crack, uh, probable crack width. So this now gets enabled um, under allowable stresses, not under design code. Okay, so that's one thing you can do to calculate stresses for, or crack widths for the, um, for a post-tension slab. All right, so let's go back and we're going to go back and reopen in RC mode. We'll use this as the basis for the um, video here. And we're going to set up a grid. We're going to use a 10 meter by 10 meter. We'll do four bays, 10 meters each direction. So we'll set this up to 10 by 10. Okay, and we'll go and under modeling, we're going to add just a few columns. We'll say that the columns here are going to be uh, 650 millimeters square. And again, we'll do we'll do four bays, um, both directions, and we'll just create a pretty simple slab here. Just force it to crack. Okay. And now I'm going to add a slab. So the slab will turn on some snap tools just to model this to the, to the corners of the columns on the exterior. We'll just snap on those four corners. And we'll make this slab um, 200 millimeters thick. That's the default for criteria under concrete. 
we're going to use um, 26 MPA for our concrete strength. And then let's go ahead and add some load. We'll just add dead load. This is superimposed dead load and live load. The program will auto consider the self weight. So for loading, we're going to use one kilonewton per square meter. And um, for the live load, we're going to use uh, three kilonewtons per square meter. Okay, we'll go ahead now and save this. Again, for the design code, we're going to select ACI 2014. We want to just report probable crack widths in this um, instance. We could, again, limit like we talked about previously, but here we'll just report these. And we want to talk about what is reported for the crack widths, how it's reported, meaning what combinations is it reported for. So if we go to the loading combos, under load combos, the default combinations are service total and service sustained. Sustained different than total is just a factor of 0.3 assigned to the live load versus one. The program will report crack widths for service level combinations. So this, these are both tagged as service, meaning again, in terms of crack width, the program will report crack widths for each of these conditions. This is different than crack deflection. Although if we set up crack deflection combinations that correlate to these two combinations in terms of what factors are applied to what load cases that are included inside of the combination, then we can make some comparisons and they, they're correlated. First, we're going to just run this using the default combos. So we'll go over here to um, uh, analysis. Note also we have to generate design strips. So let's first just analyze. We'll mesh the slab and then we're going to execute the analysis using the uncracked condition. This, this means that the stiffness modifiers set to all of our components are one. That's the default usage case as we call it. And that is actually defined for any component type. For example, if I click on a I'll reset the view here. I'll click on a column under stiffness modifier. You can see uncracked is set to one. You cannot edit this. This is um, read only. You could add a new usage case and assign um, modifiers to uh, a given component or set of components. But that's that's really beside the point here for this for this video. So let's go ahead and now and I'm going to generate some. Um, design strips. Uh, we're actually using the 2019 version here. So we're going to go to floor design under the editor. I'm just going to go ahead and, and use the editor to, to set up my support lines. Okay, we'll switch this to Y direction. And whatever component gets cut by this ray, the program will generate a support node or a support line node for that location. So that's done. We'll close that. We'll save that. And um, we're going to generate the section cuts. Okay. The program has generated both column strips and middle strips. Let me just turn off this view of these components. If we look at the X, we have, um, or excuse me, just in this case, just column strips rather. So we have column strips over the um, X direction, same thing in the Y direction. And these are required to calculate the crack widths. So we set those up. Um, now we're going to design the strips. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and design these sections that we've created. We've meshed, analyzed for the set of combinations. Now we've designed and after we design, we can check the crack widths. So I'll go ahead and reset the display here. And um, if we go up here and set our combination to service total or sustain, we, we have to pick a combination. We can't produce the crack width values for the envelope in this case. So we'll select service total under analysis slab actions, we come out here, down here to crack widths and we have uh, crack widths along the Y direction with the value. This is in millimeters and crack widths along the um, X direction, which would essentially correlate to bending about the um, 
bending about the x axis. So, and then the same thing here, cracks along this strip would actually be bending, caused by flexure about the, the y axis in this case. So, these are the crack widths for this particular combination. Service total, if I change that combination to sustain, these will be slightly less than what's reported for total. Um, another way to display these is just to set the um, use color range option under contour settings as a fixed range versus gradient and the user can display these uh, slightly different than, than um, the red green gradient that's defaulted to. And we can see um, in this example, let's go back to the total load case. We have a zone basically um, here in the outer bays. Again, this is relevant uh, related to uh, bending about Y. So we have our maximum crack width happening essentially a mid-span of the outer bay, which is 0.25. And the same thing should happen if we rotate this to um, cracks along the X. We should get outer bay maximums um, or close to it. So actually here it is, um, let's see, we have 0.26. So th this is actually showing the maximum cracks uh, at the support locations for this bay and then you can see just below that is about 0 0.21, 0 0.2 to 0 0.21 millimeters is these outer bays. So that's how we can inspect the crack width for a slab. Now what we want to do is we want to set up our crack deflections and see if we can somehow correlate the two. Uh, we'll go up here to loading, load combos. I'm going to add two new crack deflection combinations. And these are required if you want the program to check the condition for cracking. Um, we'll call this um, total load. We'll do uh, total CR. And here we'll do um, service, or excuse me, sustained CR. And we'll just basically replicate the combination factors for those two conditions. Okay, and once we've done that, let me go ahead and reset this display. I'm going to rerun the analysis. I'll save, execute the analysis again because I've added two additional combinations. I need to run through the analysis to, and include those. And we're going to design the sections again. They've, they've already been created, so we don't have to recreate the design strips. We just need to redesign them. And then finally, um, we're going to go back to analysis and we're going to run the crack deflection check. Okay, so now that's done. Now for crack deflection, if we go back to the load combinations, we get this new um, grouping called crack deflection. And that will actually show us this, the uncracked and the cracked condition for the combinations. So we have sustained CR, cracked, sustained CR. If we look at uh, sustained and I just look at the actual deformation in the Z direction, you can see the maximum deflection here is about um, point, or excuse me, negative 36 millimeters. If we look at the cracked condition for that same load combination, this jumps up to about double, 73 millimeters. And so we would expect, you know, cracking to occur either on these outer bays or let's say at the supports just first interior support from the outer bay. The same can be shown for total. The total deflection uncracked is 47 millimeters. The total crack deflection is a 115 millimeters. So for any cracked solution, it has to be preceded here by cracked underscore and then the name of the combination. We can go back to analysis under the actions option there's this reduced rotational stiffness about X or about Y. And what we'll do first before we actually check that is we're going to go back to service total. And we're going to um, just refresh ourselves here with the, with the um, crack width. So for service total, we had this maximum cracking occurring on these outer bays. And that was again bending about the Y axis. Okay, so we'll go now to the cracked combination, cracked total. And we want to look at the reduced rotational stiffness about Y. And you can see the maximum 
reduced rotational stiffness is um, essentially down here. It's about 70%. So we're down here in the zone between an roughly 55 to 70%, which correlates with these outer bays where we have maximum cracking. And we can follow and correlate this particular solution for the same load combination, just presented differently in terms of the actual crack deflections and loss of stiffness versus the crack widths. So that's that solution. Um, if we look at the other direction, this is reduced rotational stiffness about the x direction, and we can use you know similar a uh, similar approach to evaluate these these results in this direction as well, correlated with the um, solution for service and cracks along the x direction. If you have any questions, please contact us at support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.